Joel Katz, now you're CEO of CLIA, Cruise Lines International Association. I know it's Australasia. I always want to make the A Australasia, but there you go. And um, I know you've been very busy in the last few days issuing releases and so on. What's great about it, and you've done lots and lots of interviews on TV and so on, and well done to you for those. TV interviewers are not as nice as me sometimes, um, but um, you've done a lot of interviews. And what's great about that is that CLIA is being recognized as the industry spokes organization and being asked all these questions about this multi-billion dollar industry that's just stalled. And one of the releases you issued this week was about the billions being lost to the Australian economy as a result of cruising having been stopped, okay, and not starting yet. We'll talk about that in a second. So how big is the loss to the Australian economy that cruising um, has, I suppose, caused um, because, it's not, uh, because it's not happening currently? That, that's right. The, the cruise industry is worth $5 billion to the Australian economy, and 18,000 jobs are, are really supported by the industry. And as you've said, it's not just the cruise lines, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's the whole supply chain. So it's the ports, the destinations, the food and beverage suppliers, the, the travel agents, the tour operators, everybody who, who, whose livelihood is, is dependent on the cruise industry. Mm -hmm. And pretty much for the last nine and a half months, they haven't uh, had any revenue. Wow. It's quite incredible, isn't it? And I mean, how do people survive? I mean, I'm, I'm stunned with COVID, how businesses, I know lots of businesses have gone out of trouble, uh, have gone out of business, um, but how many um, have actually survived? How do they do it? And if you've got an order from P&O, say, for example, or, or Royal Caribbean or whatever, for tens of thousands of tomatoes every week when the ship's docking in, in, in Sydney or Brisbane, how do you keep going? It's quite amazing, amazing isn't it? It is. Um, and and it's, it's, you know, so many regional ports around the country are, are, are struggling um, and, and desperate for visitation. So really, the, what the, the proposal that we're making to the government, and I know this is sort of getting on to the next topic, oh, no, but the proposal, the proposal that we're making to the government to, to start um, considering a pathway towards a phased, measured, carefully controlled resumption of cruising, will allow us to start offering domestic cruising locally within Australia, being able to deliver some, some of that important visitation to those, to those regional areas that are so desperate for tourism. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I know there's been a lot of talk recently about interstate and intrastate cruising. Um, even before the borders opened with Queensland, just say cruising out of Brisbane um, to Queensland up as far as Cairns and so on. Um, and just within New South Wales and just within Victoria, but the borders are now open. So what is there to prevent the government saying, OK, get on with it, cruising, because I've, I've read that you have come up with this absolutely amazing portfolio of processes and so on that have to be undertaken to get cruising going. What's the government's response to that being? Well, really, I mean, Australia's success in combating the virus it creates an, an enormous opportunity for us to be able to offer this sort of local cruising for locals within, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, where there are still state borders, it can potentially be interstate or more broadly interstate. The, 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 the first challenge is obviously bringing the ships back in. Yeah. So we know that the Australian borders are closed. We, and, and we, we don't really have an idea yet when the government uh, is thinking that they can reopen. Obviously, while we, we're in such a great position here in Australia, other parts of the world are, are, aren't, aren't as, as lucky. And so it, you, you can understand that the risk averseness of opening up a, a potential another vector of, I suppose, virus coming into the country. Mm -hmm. So a very important part of the work that we're doing with the government is to understand how can we bring the ships and the crew safely back into mm -hmm. Australia. And we're working on quite um, detailed plans around that. So making sure that the crew are, are, are tested for COVID, that they go through quarantine isolation processes, that, they, that the ships are then safely returned into Australia, you know, you know confirmed yeah. to be clear of the virus, and then they go through the, the, a similar quarantine testing process on arrival in Australia, but at the same time not put any additional burden on the, on, on the, on the state resources. Mm. So that's a very important part of the process. No, absolutely. And I think a lot of people who haven't been on cruises um, sort of talk about, you know, the Petri dish. I do despise that phrase because... Um, I've been on many cruises, as I know you have, and in fact, sanitation um, uh, processes and protocols on cruises are the strictest you'll find anywhere. And I know that in the US and in Europe, they've been working on hugely complex processes to make sure the guests are safe. Um, so in terms of the processes you've come up with, 
um, for Australia, people would be, say, boarding in Sydney or boarding in Brisbane. They'd be going on a cruise. They would be Australians only. They'd come back to that port. They would only go to ports within that, that agreed um, sort of uh, domain, if you like, whether it be Queensland, New South Wales. So what I can't see is what, I mean, is there really a risk in that? Because there's going to be no international guests on there. There's nobody coming in from quarantine from overseas. So, you know, how quickly do you think the government might move on it then? Yeah, so you've described it exactly correctly. Um, it, it's all about local cruises for locals. Um, and in the same way that we would be carrying somebody from, let's say, Sydney down to down to Eden or from Cair uh, Brisbane up to Cairns, mm -hmm. it's the same people who could drive or fly the, yeah. the same route. Yeah. Um, the, the, it's about, you know, um, reassure, providing the reassurance to the, to, to, to the health authorities. It's about working through all the steps of the process the, the engagement has been really positive yes. and uh, you know we're starting to see some some uh, some progress it's really just about um, nutting down the details and working with the health authorities working with the with with both the states and at a federal level to ensure that the comfort levels are there and that we can and, and understanding what that phased measured um, uh, resumption really looks like mm -hmm. so that we can provide the, the confidence both to the the authorities, but also to the passengers, the crew, and of course the destinations where the ships yeah. are visiting, that it, that it's going to be done in a in a in a in a very structured, carefully managed way. Um, do you think that, for example, the uh, European um, shore excursions only uh, with the people from the ship? Do you know what I mean in terms of um, organised shore excursions only booked on the ship, going to specific places and coming back to the ship, not just wandering around a port? Do you think that'll be applied here? I think. Um, Definitely, the the um, the destination part of the of the protocols is very much being about being in partnership with the destination. Mm -hmm. So ensuring that the, that the protocols that are uh, employed on board the ship yeah. are then uh, replicated in the in the shoreside environment. So whether that's the turnaround port in terms of how the terminals work, or yeah. at, or at the at the transit port for the for the shore excursions and and the, and the um, and the tours, mm -hmm. ensuring that whatever processes and protocols are kept are, are implemented on board the ship to keep people safe th those same protocols will apply when they're ashore and and uh, you know it's going to it's going to vary i think depending on where the ship is and where and what the jurisdictional um, situation is and where the risks are and that's a, and, and, and i suppose the risk assessment is a really important part of the whole process i mean do you see for example in australia them implementing the um, trial cruises that have been implemented in the states uh, with particularly the big operators on the east coast well, one of the things that we, we're proposing to the government is it's very much about a phased um, resumption. Yeah. So um, we would we would be looking to start with reduced passenger numbers to be able to demonstrate that the protocols work, to be able to demonstrate that the that um, that you know it 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 can it can work in the way that it's been described. Yeah. We're already seeing um, you know uh, one of our members, Coral Expeditions, has started up in Queensland. The protocols that they're following are very similar to the protocols that are, or if not the same as the protocols that we're, we're proposing, a really robust set of, 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 of protocols, starting with 100% testing of the passengers and then making sure that, you know, every step of the, of the journey, um, those enhanced procedures are in place. Yeah. So that's very much what we're talking about. We, we, we're telling the government that these protocols that are being proposed are very much living and working um, uh, documents. So as the science changes, as as we learn from the experiences, so will the so will the processes be be adapted and, and the protocols adjusted. Mm. Um, okay, so the majority of ships that operate in Australia are elsewhere at the moment, as you alluded to before. So they're in either warm or well, they're not in cold layup because they're moored, but um, they're in warm layup somewhere. Okay, they're in the Philippines quite a number, I believe. So how long do you think it would take from your discussions with the cruise companies? So if the if Scott Morrison's office said tomorrow, green light, we love your protocols, everything's fine, get the ships going. How long do you think it would take to get to? I mean, I'm not asking you to commit to a date or anything like that, but the yeah. sort of time scale we're talking about. Yeah. Well, we know most of the international operators have already suspended their operations through to the end of January. Yeah. Um, but I would suggest that, uh, you know, by the time we've, the, the ships need to, they, they need to get, while they're on obviously a warm uh, layup, they obviously need to, to, to be recruited. Um, maintenance issues need to be dealt with. The crew need to be trained. The crew need to go through the testing isolation yeah. process. The ships need to be relocated down to Australia. 
once they arrive here, there's then an, an additional quarantine and isolation process. So I would I would suggest that you know even if we were to get uh, let's just say when the current biosecurity determination is is uh, renewed on the 17th of December, while well, it's very likely that it, it could be you know uh, um, extended, what we're lobbying for is that it's extended. Um, but with a with a process for us to yeah. resume yeah. resume gradually, mm -hmm. um, so we would hope to see that you know in February um, yeah. we 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 could potentially start to see a ship a couple of ships start yeah. to make their way back down to Australia and and then re and 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 then you know gradually um, rebuild the business from there. Okay. Nobody's expecting that it's going to be business <laughs> as usual from day one. There are no cruises for Christmas. No, absolutely. No, I think it's a very sensible approach. So finally, before we go. Uh, what's your message for the uh, cruise industry, uh, for the travel industry and for cruisers in terms of cruising at this point in time? I mean, there's been a lot of rhetoric in the media and all that sort of stuff. So a lot of travel agents, you know, have been having a very, very hard time. They're getting back into business. They're starting to sell domestic, right? This will be an additional domestic sell. And also to um, the consumers themselves, what are your messages in general about the cruising industry at this time? You know, we have the most passionate cruisers in the world here in Australia. We have the highest market penetration for cruise. More Australians cruise than anywhere else. And it's it's really important that um, they they understand the protocols. Um, those, those past passengers already know how much care and attention the cruise industry takes to, to, to look after them. The surveys that we've done show that, you know, the same percentage of passengers today are looking are, look, are prepared to rebook a cruise within the next two years as when we asked the same question a year ago. Yeah. So they get it, they understand, they're ready to they they're ready to 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 sail again. And the other thing which is which is really interesting is that the protocols that we're proposing is very much what they expect us to, to do, mm -hmm. of course. And at the same time they're also very happy to comply with those protocols if it means that they can get back 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 onto right. onto, onto right. I forgot, one, I forgot one question I wanted to ask you was that vaccines are coming. Um, you know, they're talking about vaccines in the USA before Christmas um, because they've invested a huge amount of money. Um, vaccines will arrive in Australia. How do you think that will impact the cruise industry? I mean, aviation has been talking about, I know Alan Joyce at Qantas has been talking about, uh, a lot of the media misreported him. He said they were talking about no fly and uh, uh, no jab, no fly. They weren't saying they would implement it. But I know other airlines globally are saying that. I've not heard other cruise companies saying it or cruise companies saying it. So how do you think the vaccination will impact on, uh, on cruising? Look, I think the message that we've been um, trying to stress from day one in this process is that we will take the best scientific, medical, epidemiological advice that we can get. Yeah. And we have been doing that at every step of the process. And the protocols that we've, that we've presented now are very much driven by the medical scientific advice that we've been receiving and that's what we will continue to do yeah. the protocols are living documents they will evolve as as we learn more about the virus at this stage it's 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 hard to know what the rollout of the virus will look like in different parts of the yeah. sorry the vaccine will yeah. look like in different parts of the world mm. but but absolutely it, 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 i don't think anybody questions that vaccine will be part of the protocols at some point in the future well, Joel, look, thank you for your time this afternoon. Really appreciate, appreciate the discussion. It's good to see the cruise industry is in very safe hands. Um, I'm a passionate cruiser, as you are, and I look forward to being on the high seas very soon out of Australia as well. But thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm.